If you guys have been following along, we've actually been living in Taipei for about two months now. We're gonna be here for about three months and it's been great, not just for our physical, emotional, mental health, it's been great for our finances as well. We originally did this for a Chinese language immersion program, so we're trying to get better at Chinese while we're here, but surprisingly, we're saving a bunch of money. I wanna go over how much it costs to kind of live our lifestyle. I'm gonna break down every single thing from rent, transportation, phone bills, food, fun. And as a bonus, we'll also go over the cost of our Chinese language immersion program and the cost of doing a full body health exam, which we recently did. In the past, I traveled for two years as a digital nomad and I was working on building passive income streams while living abroad. And it actually helped me reduce my expenses a lot. So that's why I kind of advocate doing this. And I wanted to show you guys what that looks like and see if you guys are interested in doing the same. So let's go into the rent costs first. Before coming here, I didn't really know what to do for where to live. I went to a Facebook group and they recommended this app called 591. This is an app that locals use to rent places, but when I looked at the app, it was all in Chinese. It's pretty confusing. All I could really do was translate on Google Translate from Chinese to English, but it was also hard to use and they would expect one year leases, so it's not the best. If you are trying to live permanently, then it could make sense, but for me, I was only trying to live there for a few months. I tried to reach out to a few people via line through the listing, but they all kind of mentioned that yeah you need at least a year for booking so that's how we found out that monthly rentals were not common but it's definitely not impossible because we were able to do it we also didn't want to pay for an Airbnb when the rooms weren't as nice and it's not that great for the price that you would pay but for the beginning two weeks we decided to go with an Airbnb anyway first and see if we could find a place locally after settling into Taipei so we paid $674 for 15 nights at an Airbnb it was kind of like this own little studio room with a bathroom but it also had a little shared space that they didn't really communicate through the pictures here but then after some advice from friends we found out that we could actually find listings directly through Facebook groups so we found one and then found some listings and we decided to check them out the first place was $672 per month in Zhongzheng district it wasn't bad but it was a unit within an apartment so when you leave again there's kind of an area of shared space and since there's two of us we wanted something big especially since we filmed content. We didn't really like the bathroom either. And then the second place was $800 per month in Longsan Temple. It wasn't really furnished enough and I didn't really like the location. There weren't many restaurants around and it was far from the school we were attending. But then we found this last place in Yonghe District and we instantly fell in love. It was super spacious, but it cost more at $1,450 per month, including utilities and other fees. But we thought it was worth it because of the nicer bathroom, larger space, the views, the seating area. Plus we also had an additional office space to film content. So this is the office space that we are currently in right now. It's great. So we basically signed the contract, paid the rent ASAP so no one else could get it. We were basically able to book this place within less than a week, which was nice. Even though we are paying about $1,450, I would say average most people we found were paying around $700 to $800 a month for their places. And it would definitely be cheaper if you booked one year lease. Some of the classmates I have are actually paying under $500 per month, but they're probably booking like a private room in a place. So that's why I wanted to budget a little bit higher for you guys. But overall rent is a lot cheaper as you guys can see. Now let's get into transportation. So Taipei's public transportation is super convenient and I can basically get anywhere I want to without a car. So if you're staying in Taipei monthly, I would suggest getting a T-Pass. So a T-Pass costs 1200 NT, which is basically $38 per month, which is super cheap because you can get unlimited rides on public transportation. It includes the metro, the buses, even the U-bike, which basically are bikes around the city that you can pick up and just ride and drop off at different stations. You can also use this pass in Taoyuan and some other cities too. Now, if you don't wanna pay for this, you can pay for the metro for each ticket. So depending on the distance, a single journey can go from 20 to 65 NT, which is basically 60 cents to $2, very cheap. You can also get the one day pass, which which is 150 NT and that's $4.75. So if you're here for a month, I definitely think the T-Pass is worth it. So you should definitely get that. I've been using the T-Pass every day, whether it's for the bus or the Metro. Sometimes when it's not convenient or if I'm not feeling well and I need to get to my Chinese classes I'm taking, I may pay for an Uber, which costs about $5 to maybe $7 for regular distances. If it's a lot further, it might be around $15 to $20. So on average, it's pretty cheap, usually gonna
going to be about $5 for every Uber ride. Now let's talk about phone costs. So for our phone plan, we have a T-Mobile plan that lets us use our phones internationally, but our data is so bad when we travel that we can only really send messages. It takes a really long time to load pages and things like that. So we decided to actually buy an eSIM card locally through Donghua, which is one of the popular carriers here. The eSIM, I believe, was about $60 for three months, which isn't bad. The eSIM also made it so that we could still use our current US phone number while getting data, and it was for unlimited data. So if you guys are interested in that, that's a great way to go about it if you're trying to get data. Now let's talk about food. I love talking about the food here because it is so good and so cheap. Everywhere you go, there are restaurants and little food stands. If I go downstairs right now, I can get beef noodle soup for less than $5, and I can get Cantonese food for about $4. And there's no additional tax or tip, so it's extremely straightforward. Whatever is listed is what you pay. I would say that usually my meals range from three to $9. On average, I'm probably paying about $5 per meal. At school after class, a lot of times I'll actually go to the school cafeteria and restaurants because the food is good, healthy, and only about $2.80. It's actually open to everyone, so anyone can go there. You don't need a student ID to access those restaurants. I even use Uber Eats a lot now because it's so cheap. I still pay only about five to seven dollars for my bento boxes and they feel healthy with a good amount of vegetables and things like that. And that includes the delivery and the service fees. You can even go to night markets and spend one to two dollars for different foods. On the higher side, I've probably spent about $18 on night sir restaurants and I did spend $44 on a fancier steakhouse and that was per person. But in general, I'm probably spending about $500 on food per month and that's me going out every single day, eating Uber Eats, eating at nice restaurants at times, but you could totally spend half of that if you wanted to. For example, if I ate at that school restaurant every single day, which is open to everyone, like I mentioned, I could pay just about $180 every month for food or less. Now let's talk about entertainment. I'm not exactly sure how much we spent on for entertainment, but I'll talk about the cost of different things we've done. So we really like playing games at gaming cafes and there's one near us that's about $2.20 for two hours. We also like board game cafes Cafes, and we spent about $1.90 per hour playing there. We've also done KTV. It was about $18 per person, including food for five hours. Another thing is we figured out this hack where I can use my student ID from my school and get $3 movie tickets on Tuesdays. But normally I would say movie tickets cost about seven to $10 if you don't have that student discount. Now let's go into how much I spent on the full body health exam. So the reason why I wanted to do this was I sometimes get anxiety anxiety, I get like pain sometimes and I just want to make sure I am healthy. And I think it's a good thing to do regular checkups. I had done this about five or six years ago when I was in Taipei. I knew that it was a good price. So I decided I wanted to do it again. Now I think these exams are very comprehensive. It's way more than you would get for a normal physical you would get in America. So not just the physical and the blood test, you would also get things like an EKG, chest x-ray, mammogram, ultrasound, pap smear, vision, hearing, tests obviously the pap smear and ultrasound mammogram stuff those are for women guys have different tests and they're just like a lot of different tests that they did on us that I normally wouldn't have done in America and it was extremely efficient I finished one test, they moved me to the next room to do the next one, and it just went by really fast. For women, it was about $320, while for men, it was about $287 because of a few different tests. We also decided to pay for allergy tests, and Sean's complete one was $387, while I did a smaller version for $155. I think that allergy tests are normally pretty expensive, like when I looked it up in America, it was pretty costly. And then with all of this, I didn't have insurance. So basically doing it at this price is unheard of in America. Like it's extremely cheap. I think that even if you had insurance in America, they would still require you to pay a bunch of money for this type of stuff, maybe even more than what we did. So if you guys ever want to check up on your health, I think Taipei is a great place to do it. And even their machines, like a bunch of them were a lot more advanced, it seemed like than the ones in America. So I was actually shocked. Now let's go into the Chinese immersion program. 
like I mentioned, we're here for learning Chinese. We're doing this for about three months. So it was about $1,320 for their intensive A program, and that's including the textbooks, and then $967 for regular A. Same thing, it includes textbooks. This is the price that we basically paid. And let me explain the difference with these programs. So they have an intensive, which is three hours per day for five days a week. So that's about 15 hours a day. Or you could take the regular program, which is two hours a day for five days a week. So that's 10 hours instead. But with the regular program, you still have to do electives classes. So they have electives after your class. You can take them whenever you want to. And and you're required to do an additional one hour of electives every single day. So it kind of balances out. You're required to do electives for, I think, eight hours for the entire month. So you don't have to do it every single day. It's kind of optional. And then also for library hours, you have to do 14 hours a month. So you just gotta make sure you clock in for your hours and then you're good. This is basically for their visa situation. So if you are trying to get a student visa, you have to make sure you meet those requirements. Now, I know that was a lot, so all you really need to know is intensive is three hours regular is two hours but also they have B and A programs so B is about 13 to 17 students while A is for I think six to eight students so it's a lot less people in a class and that's why we actually ended up doing A because it allows us to practice our speaking skills more because if there are more students in the class it'd be hard to raise your hand and talk whereas with these smaller classes the teacher actually calls on you and you kind of have to answer their questions no matter what. So what happened with me is I actually switched from intensive A to regular A, but I went to a higher level Chinese class because I realized that the class I was placed in initially was way too easy for me. So I made the switch and then got a refund for the difference between intensive and regular. Now I don't wanna go into all the specifics with the Chinese program, but if you guys are curious about it, maybe I will make an episode on learning Chinese and how to do it well and what the program was like. Let me know if you guys guys want to see that in the comments below but I would say that for three months this is such a great price whether you're paying $1,300 or $967 this is such a great price to learn a language because I really feel like I'm improving a lot Sean feels it as well it's just such a great program to keep you on track and when you're in the country you really learn it even faster too now I hope you guys enjoyed this episode on the breakdown of the different costs in Taipei if you guys are more interested in my day in the life I do want to make an episode on that but it's a lot to film so I just need to see if there is interest in that let me know in the comments below if you guys want to see it but overall I think it's a great idea to actually travel and live abroad while you're building your businesses while you're trying to get your finances in order because if you can work online you can save a ton of money just living in these different countries and you can learn a lot about different cultures and things like that it's a great way to kind of live your life to the fullest while building your wealth now if you guys enjoyed this episode Episode, let me know in the comments below smash the like button subscribe hit the bell button to be notified of my latest videos and I'll see you guys in the next one